So this one fella bought the golf school out for his sales force. So they weren't like, they didn't know who Chris Como was or Martin Chuck or, you know, they just came to a golf school. It's like, hi, I'm here. And they didn't really play golf. And they're all like young 35 year old muscly dudes and they're sales and they sold irrigation supplies. So these guys were like taking these big swings and they had no real concept of the circular event of a golf swing, right? So I'm kind of going, oh my gosh, this is going to be a tough golf school. Yeah. So I had to do something really quick. So I got the full group of guys. They get a towel in their gift pack. I said, guys, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get in our knees. So I got them down on their knees like this. And I said, okay, we teed up the driver. Now, the interesting thing about this wacky lesson, I was in survival mode. I had to do something quick, right? Because yeah. these guys wanted instant feedback. Right. And so I said, when you're on your knees like this, does it make sense to get steep and thump the ground? Everybody went, no. Does it make sense to wall up the ground back here trying to do something? So I had these guys make swings just like this, just circular events, right? And then I had the nerve to say, hey, guys, let's have a little fun hitting some drivers off our knees. Oh, nice. It doesn't make sense to try to go straight back and straight through on your knees. It really helps you realize that, hey, this golf is an inclined circular event. And they were able to do this? Completely, right wow. away. I think a part of the problem is when you look down, you have a target line, you try to steer things. You don't really let this club swing yeah. on an inclined circle. It's always been a challenge to teach golf instruction to a mass audience. But with golf schools, creative training aids, and a conversational communication style, Martin Chuck has found his formula. First, with Revolution Golf, and now on Golf Pass, and the Tour Striker Golf Academy, Martin Chuck is making golf more enjoyable for the average golfer just like you. Hello, doggy. You gonna help me do some downward dogs? When I first joined the Golf Pass team, I picked Martin's brain on communication and content. He learned from Canadian ball striking legends, Mo Norman and George Knudsen. Guys are way, way down over the ridge and that ball should really have run on it. I quickly learned Martin's method expedites the learning process. Today, I'm proud we are on the same Golf Pass team. I wanted to experience one of his golf schools and his numerous training aids, so I traveled to Arizona to spend a day at the Tour Striker Golf Academy close to downtown Phoenix. So everybody says, man, am I ready for a golf school? I say, yeah, come to a golf school. Let us kind of help you build your game, right? You're obviously a good striker, a good player. Now, when better players like you come, let's explain it. Go ahead and hit a few shots. I'm looking at the golfer's grip the contact, the engagement with the ground. Usually in a golf school environment, a student's nervous when they meet the coach. They come, they're excited, the coach's eyes are on them, right? So there's a lovely strike, a beautiful golf swing. So we always have technology, we're checking face and path. The students don't even know this, right? The students are just hitting shots for us. We always take some video, we get some data on ball flight. You know what Mo Norman used to call these divots? What? Bacon strips. <laughs> so we don't yeah. want pork chops, so those are great. Those are nice, thin engagements, ball and ground. Okay, good. So after the student hits a few shots, you know, as a coach, as you well know, we're looking at what the golf ball is doing out there. They've obviously shared with us what their goals are for the school. The coaches and I, we go over the questions of, hey, you know what, tell me about your body. You know, is there any uh, fake parts I need to know about? What's, do you have any arthritis? Is there yeah. any limitations? Because we want to give golfers their best swing because they're not always in the shape you're in. Yeah. It's always look, listen, feel. Let them get over their nerves, have some fun with them, create a friend first. Then we can start kind of digging as a coach. Probably the median age of the golfers right now that come to see me 50 and older. So guess what? We get a little tight. We lose the ability to rotate and elevate ourselves. Okay. Here, say, Martin, you know, what's your top issue I see with golfers that come to the golf school that are a little bit older than you and me? Is this behavior where the golfer takes the golf club, 
they get it pinned across their body, their trail arm or tracks yes. behind them, yep. and they don't create enough opportunity to get their swing up to speed. Okay. So everybody that comes to us wants to hit it farther, and we want to give them an opportunity to let the club speed up into the golf ball so they can hit it far. Okay. So the golfers are typically learning how not to zip it inside, that's a big no-no, and we try to work hard on that, right? And we try to give these golfers opportunity to get some elevation in depth in their golf swing. And if they get some elevation and depth in their golf swing, they usually do better. Mm. We're trying to increase some range of motion. Okay. Because you know what? It's more fun when your ball is closer to the green after you hit it from oh, the for tee, sure. right? We all want to hit a little bit further. <laughs> so. Now, I actually hurt my shoulder this summer. Okay. And I've been feeling, I've been traveling a lot, I've been feeling kind of tight. Right. A little bit falling into what you just described. Help me out right now. First off, I would go get a band for you. So just you like know? one of those like big kind Absolute of Absolute band. you're yep. going to stretch it out. I want to see, you know, can he control himself? What's his range of motion with that? Because that just feels good too. Mm -hmm. At breakfast on day one, we have a meet and greet. We go around the table and say, you know, what's the limiting factor? So you might say, my shoulder hurts. Okay, great. We're going to pay attention to that. Now, a guy like you who's a good player, played college golf, you're going to come to us. Probably one thing's really going to bother you. You might say, Martin, you know what? I'm really not that great with mid-range wedges. And so it's a golf school. We cover a lot of stuff, but the fact is, we're going to focus on the thing that bothers you the most. But you spoke to that fault of sucking the club in, yeah. having the arm pinned back behind you, not quite getting the arms up. Right. I actually think right now I'm struggling with that a little bit. <laughs> so take me through how you would fix that. One of my mentor coaches used to always say the no turn back swing. Okay. So go ahead and grip your golf club. Okay. Get that club in front of you, get a little bit of hip hinge, get organized. And all we're going to do right here is elevate. And you might even feel that little mm. bit of a tweaky a pain bit right tight, here. Yep. Right? And then from there, this lovely softness in your arms. I'm always looking for the wrist conditions okay, or are they a little muddled up, right? Okay. Because that's chaos in the club face if that gets crazy. So we want the wrist conditions nice. And then from there, there's elevation. Now can we rotate you, right? Just a simple way to kind of get the no turn, backswing, and then add the turn. You've done a great job. Your trail arm hasn't retracted behind the seam of your shirt. Right. So a simple one but for- But if I were to do that, now it's in, completely. it would look like this with the completely. first part. A simple tip, you know, you got the seam of your shirt right here. We want to feel like when we turn deeply into our backswing, our trail arm never gets behind that seam of our shirt. Gotcha. What you're saying is I can make sure that this- Let the turn, seam of your shirt turn more than your trail arm, right? Got it. That's nicely elevated. It gives you the opportunity, and I always say, get your Ferrari up to speed and you can't get a Ferrari up to speed in a Starbucks parking lot, right? <laughs> right? So you need to learn how to elevate and rotate so that you can get that club going up to speed. And that's mostly what we do with these guys that are our age and older. Yeah. So let's have you hit a shot. Okay. I'm gonna tee one up for you. I like to have students you know, not feel too much impact pressure, like the need to hit a great shot. I'd rather they work on the feel of this, right? Yes. So get your good hands on the club, address the golf ball. Remember my first tip, right? We're never gonna really rest the club on the ground. Yep. So the ball's elevated, the club's elevated. Now the feel for you is we're gonna go ahead and get these arms, make sure the wrist conditions are great. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Now we're gonna turn, we're gonna make sure that trail arm's not behind the seam of the shirt, then go ahead and hit one. Okay, good. So let's see you do it on your own. Elevate the arms. Okay, so up. Right, yes. great wrist conditions. Out turn the arm, perfect, and hit one. Lovely. And once that's up there, now you're playing tall golf. Yes. I don't like short golf. I want you to play as tall as you can play. You know, we want to get some depth, not way narrow. Right. You can overdo almost anything. Absolutely, but I don't want to see you playing short golf, and that's how you're going to hit a little farther. Beautiful. You also have a ton of training aids. When we come back, we're going to kind of go into those and awesome. see how those can help people at home. Learn more from Martin Chuck on your schedule. Watch his Breaking 90 series exclusively on Golf Pass. It's personalized for those of you who shoot in the 90s and 100s, but dream of the 80s. Watch anytime on the Golf Pass app or golfpass.com slash learn. Stop trying to keep your head down. Okay. When I was a little kid, George Knudsen, great Canadian, my mentor, mm -hmm. said, don't keep your head down. You know, my dad was like, he's a 14 handicapper, so you got to keep your head down. And it makes more sense. Like when you want this body to have motion and fluidity, you know, think about it. Keeping your head down is really the ability to look way over your right shoulder. Well, most of my students, they're 50 and older. We lose a little mobility in our neck. So keep your eye on the ball. Release that energy. Let your weight of the club swing into a finish. When you're so focused on keeping your head down, Chris, it stops the pivot, you flip. I know everybody thinks that's the go-to for a great golf, but it's really the limiting factor. It won't let you get really good. You're a super high-level coach, right? 
The folks that come see us typically, they struggle from that little mid-range wedge distance, you know, mm -hmm. the 20, 30 yarders. What do we see? We see the arms separate, you know, a little chicken wing type stuff. Now do one like we see in the range sometimes okay. from some of our students, where we see the, you know, body stall arms kind of chicken wing, right? Yep. And you're like, how do I do that? <laughs> you have elbow separation, you have wrist change angles, right? So when you have wrist change angles, you, you're not really controlling the loft of the golf club. Mm. And the ball in the arc, I would imagine, yeah. too. Yeah, right? I'm gonna put a lanyard on a really light inflatable ball. Brilliant. And it's called the smart ball. Put yep. that thing on for me. There you go, awesome. And so all we do is wear that below the elbows. You know what's neat about this? When people make this motion now, when their goal isn't to drop the ball, the wrist angles get much more reliable mm. and their body behaves differently. They're not gonna stick their club in the ground now because they have that subconscious need not to. So they learn how to kind of rotate and stand up and brush the grass nicely rather than stick the club in the ground. Go ahead and hit a little pitch out there. I'm gonna do the fault first. The okay. fault would be and the yep. ball would fall out. Completely. The old version of the ball would be running down the range. <laughs> Let me if it's windy, it may go way right. down the range, right? right I've had right, that happen right. to me before. Yeah. Now with this, it gave me the feedback that I didn't keep my arms together. Exactly. But I don't have to go chasing the ball. Perfect. Lucky for me, some of the better players in the world picked it up and then golfers all around the country and the world use it regularly. Good, and hold your finish. So, you know, now you've managed this, your wrist conditions are nice, you've rotated, and you've pushed off the ground. You've done all the things we want to see with a good player hitting a pitch shot. Right, and this is a classic drill. This is a great training aid to get that motion in there. Some of the younger athletes hit drivers with it, but usually it's mid-range, three-quarter shots on both sides of the ball, and you'll do great. What else you got? All right, so latest greatest, this is called the plane mate. Okay. So the plane mate you're starting to see pop up on tour. Golf passes. Rory McIlroy uses the plane I've mate. I've seen him do that. He's loving hitting wedge shots with this. And you know, I say organized confusion when I teach golf. So let's put this on you. Put that, it goes on the right side for the right-handed golfer. And then let's go ahead and put that strap through the belt loop. Great. And I'm gonna put this on your golf club while you do that. Okay. So basically we've got resistance band training. In the golf swing, you look down, we've got our peripheral awareness about, you know, 170 degrees to the right and to the left but we don't really know what's going on behind us. And then a lot of golfers, they don't have the sense of how to resist something and how to create a radius. So if I pop this on here now, right, and I'm gonna, you got that on there? I'm gonna put this on a little lower. And guess what, we're gonna put it a little tighter too. So right there. And then this goes in front of you a bit more. Awesome, you gotta have a couple cheeseburgers, buddy. <laughs> so go ahead and get your good hands on there, Okay. right? You feel that little tension right there? Yes, I do. So one of the big things we have with golfers is the first thing they do is they suck the club inside. So yep. You see how they the lost band, tension. Exactly, they, they lost tension. So we want golfers to feel as they take it back that they can sustain some tension, keep some width mm. in their backswing, right? Yeah, that's nice. So the first move they learn how to do is keep some width, and then we walk them through here and teach them how to rotate and keep oh, a bit yeah. of width on this side. Absolutely. Right, so that's a resistance they're not usually used to. Now, yes. good players have this awareness, but it even helps some of the best. Let's go back to that position. Top of the takeaway, like you said, you want to elevate and rotate, right? I want you to feel that tension. Oh, wow. Exactly, yes. you'll feel that down through here, right? Absolutely. Just stay there for a second. A massive stretch. I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee, we'll be right back. <laughs> Please don't. No. <laughs> Feeling that tension right there, so the body's aware, mm -hmm. you know, and so from here, Go back to the top of backswing position. Feel that nice stretch and stay there. Oh, yeah, and then right. slowly kind of track down and feel that width, keep the width on there. Awesome. And come on over here to this through position. So that's gorgeous. You take a rookie and you put them in there and say, okay, hey, put that little bit of tension in and let's move and have that little bit of tension, right? So now they're painting this nice circle. Yes. Now one of the key moves we teach golfers, let's let the golf club shallow a little bit. Yes. So it doesn't get steep and over the top. So another neat feature, go ahead and get into this, and this is a big thing for most golfers. We call it resist, resist, and then the band, let it relax, right? So, so we so resist losing tension. a little bit, not much, just a bit. I want the band to, there you go. So we call it resist, relax, rotate. Most golfers zip it inside and then they go this way. They would relax too early. Right, they lose tension too early. Then it's kind of resist. <laughs> exactly. We want to teach them how to have high and wide hands and depth and width. Yes. And then learn how to relax a little bit, rotate, use that rotational power to help accelerate the golf club. Awesome. And then as somebody starts to develop, go ahead and go to the top and kind of feel out of your periphery what that feels like. And let me go ahead and put that on a little tighter. And you've got mic packs on and things here, so right. a little bit in the way. There we go, perfect. 
Take that out, just beyond left arm parallel. Feel that sense of stretch. See, I love that look right there. I love the structure you've got there, right? Okay. So come back to the ball, and let's see if we can get the club on it. Go to your finish. So I'm still resisting all the way back Absolutely, so we're gonna resist all the way back, relax a tick, hit one, and go to your finish. And that looks fantastic. Yep. It feels that you're not usually accustomed to, yeah. and we just gotta introduce that, where's that sensory confusion? Where am I at in space right there? What does that feel like, and how do we move our body a little bit? Immediate feedback, which is cool. We don't let the band lose tension. We want to keep tension, then we can relax a bit, rotate, and hit it. Mike, nice to meet you. Yeah, what have you been working on with Mike? He had very nice. limited hip turn okay. yesterday. His hips didn't turn, he had no depth. So mm. he turned his hips quite a bit, got a little bit more depth. And you had that really Harley Davidson motorcycle turn hands on there, vroom vroom, right? Yeah. It's in the golf school environment. We're just trying to say, hey, you know, we're all friends here. It's not about hitting perfect shots. It's about developing feels, going back and forth with the coaches, putting some information in your continuity program so you can always reflect back on it. So we can monitor your progress down the road, right? Yeah. And this is your second day? Yes. Mm -hmm. cool. how, how many balls would you say you hit? Well, we were here all day, but probably three to 400. Wow, oh, come on. 200. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how, probably, yeah. how do you feel today? I had the yogi guy this morning, golf yogi, and I didn't feel good until after that. So inhale, we come up a little bit. Exhale, we sink a little deeper. Try to get this knee right over the ankle, guys. We want to be stable in this. The whole reason we're trying to work down through the front here, and if any of you guys have issues kind of finishing yeah. over here, okay? Can't get that pelvis up under you, control all the way through it. Being able to get that belt buckle close to the target, getting nice and long down the front of this body here, this is your new best friend, okay? I want you to be aware of your body. Stretching is important. That's why we invite Mark Williams and the golf yogi out to kind of yeah. help you guys with some basic things that you can do every day to be a better golfer. A lot of golfers that are a little older than me kind of get stuck in the toes of that lead foot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hip gets stuck and then the club overtakes. They don't quite unwind themselves. So we're sitting at breakfast this morning. I'm sitting across the table. I look under the table. Here he is going like this with his left foot, <laughs> stretching out. Doing some exercise. Right? Trying yeah. to feel oh, that's great. You know, how he can get posted into his lead heel up into his trail toe. Absolutely. And I know you do this with the yoga to help some of that rotation in the hip, as well as being able to get everything floating back to that lead heel. So when we were out in the golf course history, he hit a great. His primer swing, which is his you know, practice swing before the shot, was to kind of feel how he could rotate into his lead heel up into his trail toe. Yeah. It's something that becomes pretty natural to guys like you and me who grew up in the game. Tour sure. players have this foot that jumps around and I goes think that into the too. heel. I mean, I, oftentimes I think the concept a, a lot of recreational golfers have is that that lead foot's just got to stay planted. Right. I oftentimes just encourage them to have a little bit of movement in that lead heel. Ash had some technical pieces this morning he was working on. He was kind of lunging at it. So we worked on how his arms lateral. could feel like it got down a little bit faster. It feels like less throwing off the mound with his right leg. Okay. So his contact became much, much better. And now we're working a bit more on curves. He hits it pretty well. Mm. So we're just making some imaginary shots out there where I give him a window, a tree window, that he's got to kind of get it through the window and make it move more around where he wants it to get awesome. to. So we saw a hook there. Let's see if we can curve it left to right. What's your stock shot? Do you like to draw the ball? I like to, yeah. Okay, yeah. so sometime when you practice, it's best to practice what you're not comfortable with, right? Yes. Let's go chimney. The bunker's a lake, okay. so you've got to let it fall to the right, but I don't want it falling too far. Okay. All right. Take your grip. Once you get your setup, and I want you to squeeze your left hand a little tighter. Okay. And I want you to be mindful of that staying tighter throughout the swing. Okay? Yeah. Okay, nice a little bit better face. Nice. And there it's falling just a little to the right. We got all ranges here, right? And so we're challenging him with some shot shape things rather than just the technique of, you know, hands and address position. As a better player, we want him to see different shots, be able to play different shots. Coach Mike's an excellent player. He's walking him through some of these things to practice more effectively. Great job. Thank you. Awesome how the yeah. school can tailor towards yeah. all sorts of skill levels. It is great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, 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 Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you. I have four out of your 11 training aids on right now. We call that the tin cup syndrome right there. Yes, and this is not how we want to use a training aid. This would be overwhelming. Yes. We're just doing this for fun. 
but I think a great take home is that a training aid can be helpful when it comes to changing your motion. Yes. And what I love about the ones that you've shared with us today is that they make you do the work. Exactly. You're the one who actually has to do something to get a certain feedback. Take responsibility for your physicality. And I think also you've suggested when you use a training aid, make some swings with it, then take it off. Don't be relying on it, correct? Right. Always hit a few balls with it on, take it off for a few shots, see if you can interleave the feel so it makes sense, so you're not totally reliant on something. You want to be able to take it away and go, okay, yeah, I can feel what that coach meant and I hit better shots. I love the use of aids. It can really help someone make that change that they've been struggling well, with. Let's see what you got. All right, I don't know if I can do. I, I think you can. Okay, you so... can get all organized and you get a bunch of things on there. Oh, Fanta wow. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me try another one. <laughs> this is hard. The journey continues next time on Swing X when I travel to Dallas, Texas to visit John Sinclair. John is using unique technology, including 3D motion capture, to better teach and understand the golf swing. It's next time on Swing Expedition. You know, I'm excited for golf instruction. You know, I'm 51, I started teaching when I was 16 years old, and you know, you're a little younger than me, right? But we had to go seek out mentors, we had to spend time with right. coaches. Now these coaches, the younger coaches, they can get online, they can watch your stuff, they can watch my stuff, they can get so much more educated. So to me, what's next is, they're smarter coaches, you're the student out there, you're gonna get taught so much better than were many years ago. And then what's really cool about it is, the continuity programs we all have. People can stay in touch with me. We, right. we build them a training platform. The students reach out, we get back to them. With technology now, it's so easy to have that relationship. So the young coaches out there are getting smarter, they have way better technology, they can relate to the students better. You're a lot to thank for that as much as good work you do. Couldn't agree more. Coaching is in such a great place right now. There's so many great coaches out there. If you're wanting to improve your game, this is the time to do it. Oh, Martin, for sure. thank you so much for having me out here. You got a great approach to how you do it. This thank has you. been a lot of fun today. Well, thanks for coming to see us at the Tour Circuit Golf Academy. I really appreciate it.